Philippine Pharmaceuticals in association with Higher Secondary Principals Forum. Hi students, welcome to the Accountancy class. Today, we will explore the chapter Admission of Partner. So far, in the previous lectures, we have covered the calculation of new profit sharing ratios, revaluation of assets and liabilities, treatment of goodwill, valuation and recording of goodwill at various situations. In today's class, we will learn another important adjustment that you often come across, that is proportionate capitals. What do we mean by proportionate capitals? For example, suppose there are three partners, partner A, B and partner C. Now, if these partners are having capitals of rupees 30,000, rupees 20,000, and rupees 10,000 each, can you notice something special in the capitals of the partners? Yes. If you cut them short, okay. The ratio of the capitals comes 3 is to 2 is to 1. If the partners are sharing profits and losses in the same ratio, 3 is to 2 is to 1, we can say their capitals are in proportion to their profit and loss sharing ratio. So proportionate capitals mean nothing but capital balances of the partners in proportion to their profit and loss sharing ratio. Many times, this may not be the case. And when a new partner is admitted, the old partners may wish to keep their capital balances in proportion to their new profit and loss sharing ratio. So let us see how to do it. You have to follow the steps that you can see on the screen. First, you will find out the new profit and loss sharing ratio if it is not given in the question. You have learned that there are three methods to calculate the new profit and loss sharing ratio. You can calculate the profit and loss sharing ratio using the method one, method two, and method three. These methods depend upon the information given to you. If you are given the old ratio and share of the new partner, you are going to follow the method one. If a sacrifice ratio is given, what would be the method? Yes, you will follow method two. Then when would you follow the method three? When actual sacrifices of partners are given. So method three is to be followed when actual sacrifices of partners are given to you. So according to the information given in the problem, you will find out the new profit and loss sharing ratio. Then the second step is to calculate the total capital of the new firm. The total capital of the new firm can be calculated in various situations. If the new partner's capital is given and that is considered as the base, we can calculate the total capital. And sometimes the new partner's capital amount may not be given. Even then, we can calculate the total capital of the firm considering the share of the existing partners in the new firm. And sometimes if you are lucky, the total capital will be given to you in the question. Now let us go to the third step. 
finding the proportionate capitals. Proportionate capitals are nothing but capitals in proportion to the new profit and loss sharing ratio. So, in the second step, we calculated the total capital. Divide this total capital in the new profit and loss sharing ratio, you are getting proportionate capitals of the partners. Now, once you get the proportionate capitals of the partners, the partners actual capital balances will be found out. After considering revaluation uh, adjustments, adjustment of goodwill and all other adjustments, the distribution of reserves and profit and loss, considering all that, you find out what is the actual capital of the partners. Then you will compare it with the proportionate capitals. If the actual capital is a lesser amount, the partner has to bring in amount and make up the deficiency. If the actual capital is uh, more than the required capital, he can withdraw that amount. So, the adjustments can be made in cash by bringing in or withdrawing by the concerned partners or it can also be transferred to partners current account or loan account as the partnership mentions in as it is mentioned in the partnership deal. Okay. So, let us go to see a problem how we can solve a problem and find out the proportionate capitals. Look at the question given on the screen. A and B are partners sharing profits in the ratio of 2 is to 1. You will notice that this is the old ratio. C is admitted into the partnership firm for one fourth share. So, you are given the share of C, the new partner, share of new partner is given, old ratio is given. C brings in rupees 20,000 in respect of his capital. So, capital brought in by the new partner is given. It is agreed that partners' capitals should be according to the new profit and loss sharing ratio. So, this is the adjustment says that we have to calculate new proportionate capitals, determine the new capitals of A and B. There are three steps as I mentioned earlier. What is the first step? Yes, to find out the new profit and loss sharing ratio. Now, there are three methods to find out the new profit and loss sharing ratio. Method 1, method 2, method 3. Which is the method we have to follow here? Yes, you guessed it right, the method 1. We will follow method 1, why old ratio is given and share of the new partner is given. Okay, so as these two information only are given, we will follow the method 1. As per the method 1, we will find out the first step that is balance of profit. How do we calculate? 1 minus the share of a new partner, share of the new partner is one fourth. So, you are getting 3 upon 4. So, 3 upon 4 is the balance profit. Now, this 3 upon 4 we have to divide in the old profit and loss sharing ratio to find out the new ratio of old partners. So, the new share of A will be balance of profit that is 3 upon 4 multiplied by his old share 2 upon 1. So, this will mean 6 upon uh, 2 upon 3. So, this will mean 6 upon 12. So, the new share of uh, partner A is uh, 6 upon 12, 6 upon 12. Similarly, we calculate the new share of partner B. Same formula we will apply the balance of profit multiplied by old share of the partner 1 upon 3. So, this will equal, uh, be equal to 3 upon 12. So, we have got the new share of partner B, new share of partner A and the share of partner C is given. So, we can find out the new profit and loss sharing ratio of A is to B is to C. So, that will be 3 upon 6 upon 12 
3 upon 12 is to 1 upon 4. Here, the first denominator is 12, second denominator is 12. So, we have to make the third denominator also 12. How can we do it? Multiply by a common number, both denominator and numerator. So, you will get 6 is 2, 3 is 2, 3. Now, this is the ratio, but this is not the shortest ratio. So, we will make it short. Can we divide all these three numbers by a common number? Yes, we can divide 6, 3, 3, all these three figures by number 3. So, we can divide all this by number 3. So, we will get 2 is to 1 is to 1. So, this is the ratio of the partners in the new profit and loss sharing ratio. So, we have done the first step calculating the new profit and loss sharing ratio. 2 is to 1 is to 1. What is the second step? Yes, we have to find the total capital. Here the new partner's capital is given. New partner's capital, C's capital is rupees 20,000. It is mentioned in the problem, 20,000. Okay, so on the basis of C's capital, we will find out the total capital of the firm. The total capital of the firm, C's capital is 20,000. Okay, suppose if we divide the total capital into four parts, 1, 2, 3 and 4. C is given 1 out of 4 and that is 20,000. So, if C is given 1 out of 4, which is equal to 20,000, what would be the total capital? The second part also will be 20,000, third part also will be 20,000, fourth part also will be 20,000. So, the total capital will be the total of all this. How can we find it? We can find it by using a formula, total capital is equal to new partner's capital multiplied by reciprocal of his share. So, what is the total uh, new partner's capital rupees 20,000 multiplied by 1 upon 4, we will make it opposite the reciprocal. Okay, so we will get 4 divided by 1, which is equal to rupees 80,000. So, 80,000 is the total capital of the firm. Now, we have to find the proportionate capitals of all the partners. The proportionate capital of A, B and C is given to you. Okay, how do we do it? The total capital what we arrived at, this 80,000, we have to divide in the new ratio which is 2 is to 1 is to 1. So, we have to divide the total capital in the new ratio. So, we get the proportionate capital. Okay, so the capital of A will be 80,000 multiplied by 2 upon 4, that will be 40,000 and 80,000 multiplied by 1 upon 4, that will be the share uh, capital of B, which is 20,000 rupees, 20,000 rupees and the capital of C is 20,000. The same calculation I have shown on the screen, so you can have a look again. The First step is finding the new profit and loss sharing ratio, so that we have calculated using the method 1, the ratio what we got 2 is to 1 is to 1. And this ratio we are going to use to find the proportionate capital. So we have to find the total capital as the second step. The total capital is rupees 80,000 and divide this 80,000 in the new ratio which is 2 is to 1 is to 1. So you are getting 40,000 for partner A, 20,000 for partner B and 20,000 for partner C. So these are the proportionate capitals which partners are going to use as their closing balance. So, when you prepare your capital accounts in the capital accounts of partner A, B and C, these are the capital accounts of partners, okay, partner A, partner B, partner C. On the debit side, you have to show these figures as balance carried down. Rupees 40,000 will be the capital balance for A, 
rupees 20,000 will be the capital balance for B and rupees 20,000 will be the capital balance of C. So these are their capitals which will appear as the closing balances in their capital accounts. And the same capitals will appear in the new balance sheet after admission as the capitals of all A, B and C partners. Okay, now let us do another question. Illustration 2. If in the illustration 1, the capitals of old partners A and B, after all adjustments relating to goodwill, revaluation of assets and liabilities, etc., are rupees 45,000 and rupees 15,000 respectively, determine the deficiency or excess amount. Pass necessary journal entries, assuming that partners withdraw excess amount or bring in the deficient amount. So let us find out what is the excess amount and the deficient amount with reference to the previous problem that we solved. So in the previous problem when we solved, we got the proportionate capital of A 40,000, B 20,000. They are the old partners. Okay, we are taking the new partner's capital as the base capital, so that is anyhow 20,000 rupees. He is bringing in 20,000 rupees. Now in the problem here, it is given, after all adjustments, please note, after all adjustments related to revaluation of assets and reassessment of liabilities, means after showing the revaluation profit or loss. After recording the goodwill adjustments, okay, and after all the adjustments, if partner has taken over any asset, taken over, uh, settled any liability, after transferring the reserves, the undistributed profit, unadjusted uh, losses, etc., if the capital balances are 45,000 for partner A, what does it mean? His required capital is only 40,000, but his actual capital is 45,000 in the capital accounts. So this shows that he has an excess amount of rupees 5,000. And this excess amount can be withdrawn by partner. So partner is withdrawing excess capital. Capital is withdrawn by the partner. Partner is the receiver, debit the receiver. You are going to debit partner's capital account. Partner's account is a personal account. Debit the receiver, that is the rule you have learned. And partner is withdrawing amount from the business. So he may withdraw by cash or by check. So the bank account or cash account should be credited. Okay, you, are, you will be crediting the cash or bank account. So when an excess amount is withdrawn from the capital, partner's capital account debtor to cash or bank. Then what about partner B? Partner B requires 20,000, but what is the balance he has in the capital account? When I say balance, it is not the opening balance, it is the amount after adjusting revaluation profit or loss, surplus or reserves, undistributed losses, goodwill, after all the adjustments, the available capital of partner B is rupees 15,000. Okay, so this 15,000 is not sufficient. He, need to have, he needs to have 20,000 rupees. So there is a deficiency of rupees 5,000. So this 5,000 deficient amount partner should bring into the firm. He should invest as his capital. What is the entry you have already learned when partner invests his capital, cash or bank account debtor to partner's capital account. Very good. So you will debit cash or bank account and credit partner's capital account. Partner is the giver, credit to the giver. So this is how you will find out what is the amount to be brought in by a deficient partner or if there is an excess amount, how to take it back. Okay, partners can take it back by cash or bank or even these amounts can be adjusted in their current accounts also. We will see that later. Problem number three. A, B and C are partners in a firm 
sharing profits in the ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1. So, you are given the old ratio. When you read the question, you have to note it down like this. What is given? That is very, very important. D is admitted into the firm for one fourth share in profits. So, this is the share of uh, D, share of uh, new partner D that is given, old ratio is given, share of the partner given, then which he gets as one eighth from A. So, one eighth A is giving. That means, A is actually sacrificing one eighth. So, we are given the actual sacrifice of A, similarly actual sacrifice of B, one eighth from B. It is not given one eighth of B. If one eighth of B is given, it is B's share into one upon eight. It is not given like that, it is given one eighth from B, one eighth from A. So, actual sacrifices are given. This will help you to identify the method to find out the new profit and loss sharing ratio. Are you getting it? Yes. You are guessing it right? Yes. We will find it out as per the method 3. As per the method 3, when the actual sacrifices are given, we will use the method 3. Now, let us continue to read the question. The total capital of the firm is agreed upon rupees 1 lakh 20 thousand. The step 2 is calculation of total capital, but here it is given to you directly. So, you are lucky fellows. So, 1 lakh 20 thousand is the total capital of the firm. D is to bring in equivalent to one fourth of this amount as his capital. But here it is not given what is the amount of capital C is bringing. That is a reference is given, a hint is given that should be one fourth of this total capital 1 lakh 20 thousand. So, C has to bring 1 lakh 20 thousand multiplied by one fourth. So, that is what C is going to bring, uh, sorry D is going to bring in. Find the proportionate capitals of A, B, C and D. So, there are four partners here. One more thing that you should note is the sacrifice is done by only A and B. C is not giving any amount of his share of profit to partner D. That means, C is not sacrificing here. His share of profit may remain the same because he has not sacrificed anything. So, let us calculate the proportionate capital using step 1, find the new profit and loss sharing ratio. Step 2, find the total capital which is given here and step 3, the proportionate capitals. Step 1, find the new profit and loss sharing ratio as per method 3. Method 3 is the easiest method. You have to just minus the sacrifice from old share. Old share of partner A is 3 upon 6 minus the sacrifice is 1 upon 8. Now, here how do we minus? It is very important to remember before addition and deduction of fractions. The denominator should be kept as the same. You can find the LCM or you can go in a simple method. The alternative method is multiply this denominator with 8, the denominator of the second figure. So, the numerator also we will multiply and multiply 1 upon 8 with the denominator of the first fraction that is multiply by 6. So, the denominators become e uh, same now, equal now. So, what is the answer you are getting? 3 into 8 is 24 upon 48 minus 6 upon 48. So, you will get 18 upon 48. Are you getting it? Yes. The same way we will find the new share of B. His old share is a 2 upon 6 minus his sacrifice is 1 upon 8. Again, we will convert these denominators into the same. Multiply by 6 here. Okay, so, we are getting 2 into 8, 16. 
minus 1 into 6 10. So, 16 minus 10 uh, minus 6 that will be 10 upon 48. Okay, so we have found the new share of partner A, new share of partner B and the new share of partner C will be the same. Why it is the same? Because he is not sacrificing anything. The share of D is given to us. Share of D is given 1 upon 4 that will remain the same. So, let us find the new ratio. A's share is for 18 upon 48 is to 10 upon 48 is to C's share is given 1 upon 6. We will convert this into denominator 48 by multiplying by 8. The numerator and the denominator we will multiply by 8 is to the share of D is 1 upon 4. So, this also we will convert the denominator of 48. Okay, so, we will multiply by 12. Multiply by 12. So, we are getting the new ratio 18 is to 10 is to 8 is to 12. This is not the final ratio. Please remember, a ratio should be expressed in the shortest way possible. So, can we divide 18, 10, 8, 12 by a common number? Yes, we can divide all this by number 2. We can divide by num number 2. So, we can minimize them. 18 by 2 will be 9 is to 5 is to 4 is to 6. So, this is the final profit and loss sharing ratio. Please remember the ratio should be expressed in the shortest way possible. So, 9 is to 5 is to 4 is to 6 is the ratio. This is the step number 1, finding the new profit and loss sharing ratio. The second step is total capital, which is given here in the question 1,20,000 rupees. It is given. So, we will take up the step number 3 directly now. Share of uh, capital of partner A, capital of partner A in the new firm will be 1,20,000 rupees multiplied by 9 upon 24. Okay, when you do the calculation, you will get 45,000. One uh, share of uh, B in the capital 1,20,000 multiplied by 5 upon 24. Uh, so, you will get uh, 25,000 rupees. Then C, capital of C 1,20,000 multiplied by 4 upon 24. So, this you will get 20,000 rupees and uh, share of D will be 30,000 rupees. 30,000 rupees. Okay, when you add up 45,000 plus 25,000, 70,000 plus 20,000, 90,000 plus 30,000, 1 lakh 20,000 that is the capital. So, these are the capitals of the partners in the new firm. They have to maintain these figures 45,000, 25,000, 20,000 and 30,000 in their capital accounts as their closing balances. So, that their capitals and the new profit and loss sharing ratio will be the same. What is the same? 9 is to 5 is to 4 is to 6. The same calculations are shown on this slide. You can have a look. The new ratio what we calculated is 9 is to 5 is to 4 is to 6. Total capital is given. This total capital we have to divide in the new ratio. So, we are getting 45,000, 25,000, 20,000 and 30,000 as capitals of the partners in proportion to their new profit and loss sharing ratio. Let us go to another question. In this problem, if in the illustration 3, the previous problem, the capitals of A, B and C after all adjustments, please remember after all adjustments means after adjusting revaluation, profit, loss, reserves, 
profit and loss, uh, uh, distributed, undistributed losses, accumulated losses, okay, division of uh, uh, surplus in the funds, treatment of goodwill. After all the adjustments, the capitals of the partners A, B and C were 40,000, 35,000 and 30,000. So these are the actual capitals, 40,000, 35,000 and 30,000. Okay, what are the proportionate capitals? We found out 45,000, 25,000, 20,000 and 30,000. These are the proportionate capitals of the partners. But when you compare the capital of A, he has only 40,000, whereas he should have 45,000 to maintain the capital in proportion to the new profit and loss sharing ratio. So here you will find there is a deficiency of rupees 5,000. So deficient amount is rupees 5,000. What should A do? He should bring in. Is, uh, a capital should be credited, he will be a giver. So cash or bank account, debtor to is capital account. Partner brings in cash to the firm, the deficient amount. What about partner B? He has 35,000. What he requires is only 25,000. So there is an excess of 10,000. He can withdraw this amount of 10,000 from his capital account. Cash or bank balance will decrease. Partner A is the receiver, so his account should be debited. So B's capital account debtor to cash or bank account. So partner B is the receiver, his account will be debited. So B's capital account debtor to cash or bank account. What about partner C? A similar situation, he has surplus amount, he has 30,000 rupees, whereas he requires only 20,000 rupees, which means there is an excess of rupees 10,000 in his capital account. He can withdraw that amount, his capital will be debited and cash or bank will be credited. The partner's D, new partner, brings in his proportionate capital 30,000 rupees, cash or bank account debtor to partner's capital account. So this is how we will adjust the excess amount or deficient amount in the capital accounts of the partners. Alternatively, excess or deficient amount in the capital accounts can also be adjusted by transferring to partner's current account or partner's loan account as the case may be, as it is mentioned in the partnership deed or as it is agreed upon by the partners. Okay. So in short, proportionate capitals mean capital account balances in proportion to the new profit and loss sharing ratio. That's the meaning of proportionate capitals. So how do we find the proportionate capitals? We will follow three steps. We will find the new profit and loss sharing ratio. We will find the total capital of the firm. It can be based on the new partner's capital if it is given. If it is not given, we will find out proportionate to the share of the old partners or sometimes the new total capital is given to us. Okay, now the total capital we will divide in the new profit sharing ratio to find the proportionate capitals. So proportionate capitals are nothing but capital closing balances in proportion to the new profit and loss sharing ratio. Now when we calculate the proportionate capitals, there can be some excess amount in the capital account which partners can withdraw or transfer to their current accounts or there can be a deficiency in the partner's capital account which partners will bring in or it will be transferred to their current accounts or even loan accounts. That's it. It's very easy to understand proportionate capitals. We will solve a problem with the adjustment of proportionate capital balances. So let us see A and B are partners in a firm sharing profits and losses in the ratio of 2 is to 1. C is admitted into the firm with one fourth share in profits. The balance sheet of A and B as on 31st March 2020 
before C's admission was is under. Liability side, creditors, bills payable, general reserve, capital balances of A and B. Asset side, cash in hand and cash at bank, sundry debtors, stock, furniture, machinery, building. Okay, so these are the assets and uh, liabilities given to us. There are some adjustments. C brought rupees 30,000 as capital and rupees 20,000 as his share of goodwill. Building was valued at rupees 45,000 and machinery at rupees 23,000. A provision for bad debts is to be created at 6% on debtors. The capital accounts of A and B are to be adjusted in the new profit sharing ratio, taking C's capital as the base. Excess or deficiency may be adjusted by cash. Other terms of agreement are as under. C brought rupees 30,000 as capital and rupees 12,000 as his share of goodwill. Building was valued at rupees 45,000 and machinery 23,000. So there are adjustments on machinery and building. A provision for bad debts is to be created at the rate of 6% on debtors. So there is another adjustment on debtors. The capital accounts of A and B are to be adjusted in the new profit sharing ratio taking C's capital as base. So very important information is given to us. What is the base capital and uh, the proportionate capital adjustment is there. So students please note only when this particular instruction is given you will follow the proportionate capital adjustments in the solution. So it is only as per the agreement by the partners. If this particular adjustment was not given, you are not supposed to solve the problem in the proportionate capital method. Okay. So let us find out uh, the excess or deficiency must be adjusted by bank account. So it's very clearly given it should be adjusted through their bank account. Okay. So let us solve it. You must read the problem at least two or three times so that you know which item has got adjustment. You can even mark those items so that you don't miss them out. So we will begin from the liability side. Your, I hope your accounts are ready. Keep your revaluation account, partner's capital account and the balance sheet after admission of the new partner. All these things you should be uh, keeping ready. So now let us start solving it. We will begin from the liability side. Creditors are given. Creditors and bills payable, we found that there are no adjustments. So we have to just bring them up where they would come. The liabilities would appear on the liability side of the balance sheet and assets on the asset side of the balance sheet. So on the liability side of the balance sheet, we will write creditors and also we can write the bills payable as there are no adjustments connected with that. So liability side we wrote creditors and bills payable. Now let us go to the next item on the liability side that is general reserve. General reserve what we should do? We should divide them among the old partners in their old ratio. So what is the old ratio? 2 is to 1. So A will get 2 upon 3 and B will get 1 upon 3 of 6,000 rupees. So you can take up your calculator and do the calculation and check it out. How much it would be? Yes, it would be 4,000 and 2,000. And where this reserve should appear? Reserve is a liability. That means it should increase the capitals of the partners. Okay, we are going to transfer the reserve from reserve account to the partner's capital account. Partner's capital account also is having a credit balance. So when we add a credit balance, the partner's capital will increase. So we will show it on the credit side of the old partners. So please remember, only the old partners will have this item reserve. 
reserve is divided among the old partners A and B, 4,000 rupees for A and 2,000 rupees for B. You may wonder why I wrote reserve on the second line. Why? Can you tell me? Yes. The first line always should be capital balances, opening balances of the capital. Balance brought down from the old capital accounts. So we are going to show the capitals of A and B as the next item. A has uh, 50,000 and uh, B has uh, 32,000. So we will write these figures as the opening balances and please note these are written on the first line, first line. We are writing it on the credit columns. Why? Capital balances are given on the liability side. You may come across some problems where capital balances appear on the asset side. Then where do you write? Capital balances on the asset side means there are debit balances. So you will show them on the debit side of the capital accounts. So in fluctuating capital method, capital balances may be debit balances or credit balances, any one. Okay. It may appear on the debit side or it may appear on the credit side. Very good. Now we have taken up all the items from the liability side. The liabilities, creditors and bills payable did not have any adjustments. So we just copied them, wrote them on the liability side of the new balance sheet. Reserve, we divided among the partners in their old ratio. It belongs to the profits of the partners. So A and B, their capital balances were shown. Now let us come to the asset side. Asset side begin with the cash in hand. Cash in hand is rupees 2000. From the asset side, we will just bring the cash in hand to the asset side of the new balance sheet. So we are going to just type them on the debit side, on the asset side of the balance sheet. That is cash in hand. Cash in hand is a debit balance, so it appears on the asset side. We are writing it directly in the outer column because the adjustments of capital brought in, premium brought in by the partners, etc. Proportionate capital, deficiency and uh, excess withdrawal, etc. We will be doing in the bank account. It is very specifically given in the last adjustment. They are to be adjusted through the bank. So we will adjust them through the bank account. So bank account 10,000 as it is going to be adjusted, we will write it in the inner column. You will be adding up certain amounts, you will be minusing certain amounts. So to do that, we will do it in the inner column. Now, there is another alternative. Instead of showing the adjustments of bank account in the balance sheet itself, as add, less, etc., you can also prepare a bank account in the working notes. That also is possible. You can prepare the bank account and find out the balance and show the final balance in the balance sheet. Okay, that, that can also be done. But as we are concentrating more on admission part of the uh, accounting here, we are showing the adjustment in the balance sheet itself. Now, let us look at the cash at bank. It is a 10,000. There is an adjustment. Number one says partner C brought rupees 30,000 as capital and 12,000 rupees as his share of goodwill. So the premium is brought in method one, premium method of goodwill. So the new partner is bringing in 30,000 as capital, 12,000 rupees as goodwill or premium. So we can add these two figures to the bank account. So the bank account will increase with these two figures, capital account, uh, capital of partner C and uh, the premium brought in by partner C. Now immediately we will record the capital in the capital accounts. Partner brings uh, uh, rupees 30,000 as his capital cash or bank account letter to partner's capital account. Here we have written in the bank account. So bank account debtor to partner C's capital account. So partner C's account must be credited by the amount of capital he brought in, that is rupees 30,000. So he, C will be credited by rupees 30,000. So this is very important. 
you have to record the adjustment in two places, in the debit and credit aspects. Otherwise, you may miss out some elements, and at the end, the balance sheet will not tally. So capital brought in by the partner, we have added to the bank balance, 30,000 rupees, and credited the capital account of partner C. So by bank, we have written. Similarly, partner C is bringing a 12,000 rupees premium. 12,000 rupees premium. This amount of 12,000 brought in by partner C must be distributed among the sacrificing partners. So what is the sacrifice ratio here? The sacrifice ratio is not given. We are given only the old ratio. So whenever you are not given a specific sacrifice ratio, and also if you are not given a new profit and loss sharing ratio, if new ratio is given, you can minus old rate, minus new will be the sacrifice. Okay, so here the new ratio also is not specifically given. Please remember, the sacrifice ratio will be equal to the old ratio. So we will divide 12,000 rupees in the same 2 is to 1 ratio, which is considered as the sacrifice ratio now, and the amount will be credited to the partners who are sacrificing. Here, both the old partners are sacrificing. So it will appear on the credit side of the partner's capital account by goodwill. We are using the same ratio 2 is to 1, not as the old ratio. Always remember the premium is distributed in the sacrifice ratio. So we are using the old ratio as the sacrifice ratio. Why? Because the new ratio is not given. So as the new ratio is not given and also sacrifice is not specifically mentioned, we consider sacrifice ratio as equal to the old ratio. So partner A gets uh, 8,000 rupees, partner B gets 4,000 rupees. Okay, so we have done the first adjustment. C brought 30,000 as capital and 12,000 as a share of goodwill, which is distributed among the partners and the amount is retained. Now let us go to the next item after cash and bank, sundry debtors, rupees 8,000. Yes, there is an adjustment number three. A provision for bad debts is to be created at the rate of 6% on debtors. So we will record debtors in the balance sheet. Debtors will come in the balance sheet. On the asset side, we have to write in, in the inner column. We will write it in the inner column. Debtors are rupees 8,000. The adjustment says a provision for bad debts is to be created at the rate of 6% on debtors. So we will find out 6% of 8,000. And the provision for bad debts will be deducted from the debtors. So what is the 6% of 8,000? That we will calculate and we will minus that amount from the sundry debtors. So you take your calculator, 8,000 multiplied by 6%, you will get 480 rupees. And this 480 rupees is a decrease in your assets. Your sundry debtors, 8,000 becomes now 7,520. So there is a decrease in your assets, which will result in a loss to the business. So it should appear on the revaluation account. As it is a loss, it appears on the debit side of the revaluation account. So on the debit side of the revaluation account, you will find we, we will write uh, provision for bad debts, 480 rupees. So decrease in the asset is a loss to the business. On the other hand, if asset increases, it is a gain to the business. So let us go to the next item, stock. There is no adjustment. Furniture, there is no adjustment. So these two items we will just bring and show on the asset side of the balance sheet because there are no adjustments. We are showing it directly on the outer column. So stock 10,000 and furniture 5,000 is shown directly on the asset side. Now let us take up the items machinery and building. 
machinery there is an adjustment building was valued at 45000 rupees and machinery 23000 rupees so 25000 is the book value of the machinery the revalue is 23000 the new value is 23 so from 25000 machinery is become 23 there is a decrease in the value of an asset 2000 rupees a decrease this 2000 rupees is a loss to the business so we have to show it on the debit side of the revaluation account there is a loss in the asset rupees 2000 by way of a decrease in the machinery account and this 2000 will be deducted from the value of the machinery so we will get the balance in the machinery account as 23000 rupees so the loss in the asset is deducted from the asset on the other hand look at the building building was at rupees 40000 valued at rupees 40000 but now the revalue of the building is 45000 so 40000 was the value we have shown in the books of accounts but now the revalue is 45000 which means there is an increase in the value of our asset of course this increase in the asset is a gain to the business okay it is a profit to the business so we will show it on the credit side of the revaluation account why revaluation account is a nominal account it runs on the principal debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains so there is a gain of 5000 this increase in the value we will add to the building so we are going to show the building at the new value now the revised value 40000 plus 5000 45000 so you will notice the building is now 45000 40000 we have added 5000 more it is become 45000 so now we have taken up all the assets and all the liabilities you can go through again creditors bills payable reserve capital balances cash in hand cash at bank debtors stock furniture machinery building all the items we have taken into consideration let us go through the adjustments is there any adjustment remaining see broad capital and 12000 as goodwill that's done building was valued and machinery also revalued that's done a provision for bad debts is to be created at 6% on debtors that's done the adjustment number 4 is remaining but please note this adjustment must be done after doing all other adjustments so let us find out what is the profit or loss on revaluation by now so let us see which side is heavier the credit side is heavier so as the credit side is heavier we find the total 5000 the same amount is written on the debit side 5000 minus 2000 minus 480 so 5000 minus 2480 you will get the profit on revaluation 2520 now what to do with this 2520 of course it must be distributed among the old partners in their old ratio so the ratio is 2 is to 1 2 for 2 upon 3 for a and 1 upon 3 for b so we will divide 2520 in the 2 is to 1 share and transfer it to the capital accounts of partner a and partner b so partner a gets 1680 how do we get that 2520 multiplied by 2 divided by 3 similarly 2520 multiplied by 1 upon 3 is 840 so 2 is to 1 we have distributed and this amount should be credited to the partners capital accounts so in the partners capital accounts the revaluation profit is shown a's account is credited with 1680 rupees b's account is credited with 840 rupees and now 
we have done all the adjustments we have transferred the reserves we have done adjustments of revaluation account profit is transferred to the capital accounts we have adjusted the goodwill premium brought in by the new partner so all adjustments are done now we will find out what is the actual capital and what are the proportionate capitals so let us take up the proportionate capital adjustment it is given the capitals of a and b are to be adjusted in the new profit sharing ratio taking c's capital as the base excess or deficiency must be adjusted by bank account so this is the adjustment of proportionate capitals you have learned that there are three steps step 1 finding the new profit and loss sharing ratio so we will calculate the new profit and loss sharing ratio using the method 1 why method 1 we are given old ratio of a and b 2 is to 1 and share of the new partner 1 upon 4 so we get the balance of profit 1 minus 1 upon 4 that is 3 upon 4 now divide this 3 upon 4 in the old ratio so new share of a will be 3 upon 4 multiplied by 2 upon 3 which is 6 upon 12 new share of b will be 3 upon 4 multiplied by 1 upon 3 which is 3 upon 12 now the new ratio will be a is to b is to c is equal to 6 upon 12 3 upon 12 and the share of uh, partner c is 1 upon 4 which we will convert by multiplying 3 numerator we will multiply by 3 and denominator we will multiply by 3 so the new ratio you are getting is 6 is to 3 is to 3 which is not the final ratio the final ratio will be 2 is to 1 is to 1 how do we get 2 is to 1 is to 1 6 3 3 all three numbers can be divided by one common number yes you can divide by 3 so when you divide by 3 6 becomes 2 3 becomes 1 and 3 becomes 1 so this is the shortest way possible so we will take the new ratio 2 is to 1 is to 1 now the total capital we have to find out it is to be calculated on the basis of c's capital c's share is 1/4 and his capital is 30000 so 30000 multiplied by the reciprocal of a new partner share 1 upon 4 you have to just turn it around it will become 4 upon 1 so 30000 multiplied by 4 upon 1 is 1 120000 now divide 1 lakh 20000 in the 2 is to 1 is to 1 proportion so you are getting the proportionate capital of partners so proportionate capital of a 1 lakh 20000 multiplied by 2 upon 4 which is 60000 1 lakh 20000 multiplied by 1 upon 4 will be b's capital which is 30000 c's capital is also given uh, that is 30000 So one lakh twenty thousand into one upon four. So you are getting sixty thousand for A, thirty thousand for B, and thirty thousand for C. Now these proportionate capitals must be the capital balances of the partners, closing balances of the partners. So we will show these proportionate capitals as the closing balance directly in the capital account. So students, please note. otherwise the closing balances are found out by finding the difference between debit side and credit side of the capital accounts but here whenever there is a proportionate capital adjustment you will directly write the proportionate capitals on the debit side of the capital account as the closing balances so as balance carried down you are going to show in the capital account the proportionate capitals 60000 30000 30000 after writing this you will be able to tell which side is more whether the debit side 60 30 30 is more or credit side figures are more in total so let us find out for a 50000 4000 8000 of course it crosses 60000 for a 60000 Uh, 
is not the highest figure. His credit side is more. His credit side is 63,840 rupees. So the heavier shoe amount should be the total. On the debit side also, we will write the total for A as 63,680 rupees. Now we find out the defi uh, deficiency. Uh, sorry, we will find out the, uh, yes, he needs to have only 60,000. We will find out the excess amount. So now we will find out the excess amount in the capital account of partner A. How do we find out? The 63,680 minus all the amount in the debit column. Here there is only one amount. Even if there were many other figures like profit and loss, a loss was there, revaluation loss was there. If partners have withdrawn the amount of goodwill credited, all that you will consider, you will minus all that and find out the difference. So here the difference is going to be 63,680 minus 60,000. The amount of difference is 3,680. Now this is the excess amount in the capital account of partner A. He needs to have only 60,000 but he is having 63,680. So this will be transferred to partners. Uh, this will be withdrawn by the partner. It will be withdrawn by the partner. So you will transfer to the bank account. Okay, it can also be transferred to the current account or loan account if it is mentioned in the problem. Here it is very clearly given that partners will withdraw the excess amount or the deficiency they will bring in. So this is the amount withdrawn by partner A. This is the excess amount. As partner is withdrawing, we will minus it from the bank balance. So the amount withdrawn by partner A 3680 we will minus from the bank account that much bank becomes bank balance becomes less what about partner b his credit side is 32 it is crossing 30000 which is the balance so we will find out the credit balance or uh, credit total of partner b credit total of partner b comes to 38840 write the same on the debit column of partner B. So 38,840 from that minus the balance. Any other debits also you should consider if it is there. Now there is only 30,000. So when you deduct that 30,000, you are getting the 8,840 rupees excess amount which is withdrawn by partner B. So that much amount will become less in our bank balance. Now after minusing, the balance in the bank account will be 39,480 rupees. So we have calculated the bank balance after adding the capital amount brought in by the new partner, after adding the premium brought in by the new partner, and after minusing the excess amount withdrawn by partner A and partner B. Please remember how to calculate the bank account. If you were preparing a bank account in the working note, whatever we have added, you will debit in the bank account. Whatever we have deducted will appear on the credit side of the bank account. They are payments, so you will credit the bank account. Then the final balance will be the same, 39,480, which you can directly show in the balance sheet. Now, as we have done the balancing of A and B, partner C's account is remaining. Partner C's account is the debit side and the credit side uh, will be the same amount. So the total and the balance, everything is the same. There is no excess to be withdrawn, no deficiency to be brought in. So we have got the capital balances of the partners. Now please remember these capital balances will appear in the balance sheet. So we will take up the balance sheet of the partners. Okay, in the balance sheet, we are going to transfer the capital accounts of the partners which are in proportion to the new profit and loss sharing ratio. So the capitals of the partners are 60,000, 30,000, 30,000. So the total comes to 1,20,000, 1,20,000, 1,20,000, 1,20,000, 1,20,000, 1,20,000, 1,20,000, 1,20,000, 1,20,000, 1,20,000, 1,20,000, 1,20,000, 
now is the moment we have done all the assets uh, transferred or liabilities transferred we have uh, recorded all the adjustments we have done the proportionate capital adjustments and finally the total of the balance sheet on the liability side and on the asset side must tally so take up your calculator and total the liabilities 8000 plus 4000 plus 120000 what is the total you are getting the same total you should also get on the liability side yes you got it 132000 your assets are equal to liabilities plus capital accounting equation is a tally so this is how you solve a problem with the proportionate capital adjustments so students so please note whenever you solve a problem you will begin from any one side i have started from the liability side okay you will go in order you will take up the items one by one and see the adjustments related to that you will add deduct whatever to be done you will do it then you will uh, uh, do the adjustments after that you will do the balancing of revaluation account transfer to capital accounts proportionate capital should be done as the last adjustment after transferring all other items in the capital account then transfer the proportionate capitals to the balance sheet then only your balance sheet will tally because the balance sheet will be showing capitals in proportion to the new profit and loss sharing ratio thank you very much prudent scholars powered by lupin pharmaceuticals